Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel and today I wanted to take you kind of behind the scenes and what it's like to actually plan a color story and kind of my organization and thought process behind it. So in planning this color story, this happened about um, a month and a half to two months ago, I decided I wanted to film this video and use the Pantone uh, 2018 Winter Colors of the Year uh, for for this story and so between filming this and also um, you know actually dyeing the yarn a couple of days ago they've released the new colorway for 2019 which is Living Coral so you'll see me here kind of going through each color writing the RGB values taking a color swatch of every color and then also um, kind of organizing my thoughts around this color palette. And the only thing that has changed between this planning and then actually executing the dye is that I wanted to lift some of the colors to be a little more vibrant. So instead of dyeing a lot of deep and saturated jewel tones, I wanted to do some lighter speckling on a bare base to kind of lift the palette in general. So after I'm done with my notes app, I like to write down color combinations. So this physical writing down process is actually really important to me because it helps me to kind of wrap my head around how I want to tell the color story, which colors I think might be better as staples or pops of color or kind of accents in the actual um, palette. And I like to try and include either a lot of the same tones and have variations on those tones or saturations, or I like to use the rainbow as a model where I'm trying to pull a little bit of every color into the color story so it makes it feel complete. So you'll see me here checking all my colors, making sure that I've included all the colors that I wanted, and now I'm taking a tally on how many times I've referenced each color. So for example, Sargasso Sea, Almond Buff, Tofu, I mentioned four times in each of my combinations, Ceylon, Ceylon Yellow, I mentioned a few times, and so this helps me really categorize the colors that really stuck out to me as more staple colors or colors that make me feel like this this um, color story is grounded. So you'll see me typing here and going through um, and organizing them in my notes app. I really like using this app on my laptop because it transfers over to my iPad or my phone and so anytime I have a thought or think like okay I, I'm, I found a photo that kind of represents this um, I can just pull up my notes app and add it in. And so you'll see me here going over my dye selections and then also here organizing color swatches. So this is another tool that I use to help me visualize how colors will work together, which colors I've actually selected, and how I might want to organize. So I took all of my color stories that I wrote down, all of those small groups, put them into a paint app, and then I'm pulling up all of the colors next to each other. So individually, in a Roy G. Biv manner and also some of the neutrals. So I organize it into neutrals and then pops of color and then I put it also into my notes app. So as you know, a lot of the dye process is a lot of planning and also a lot of labeling, packing, shipping, prepping, prepping yarn, cleaning, all of that. So you'll see me here pulling through some of my skeins and you know, here I'm really just thinking about how do I want to present this color story. And so by this point, the new color had come out for next year and so I knew I wanted to lift the colors out of the winter feel and more into the springtime feel to, you know, to give a, a lift to the winter time. You know, we've been saturated with jewel tones you know, for a few months now with all the Christmas colorways and Christmas advents and all of that, all the deep fall jewelry tones. And I really wanted to kind of lift this into a light winter feel. So having a little bit of white space on the yarn, I wanted to pull up more of the bright colors instead of the more deeper colors. So using the bright colors as the main color in the colorway and then using the deeper colors to kind of ground it. Um, and so you'll see me here, I'm prepping the pants, prepping the yarn, getting everything ready to go for dyeing. 
you watched my previous dyeing video, this uh, process will look very familiar to you. And so this is kind of what happens behind the scenes. Um, when you see colors, you think, oh, it's wonderful and it must be so fun to dye yarn, which it actually is, but it is a lot of preparation and cleaning. And especially since I do a lot of dyeing in my kitchen, I have to be very diligent and vigilant about um, how I'm using my dyes and the methods that I use to dye and also my cleaning procedures to make sure that any dye is removed from my surfaces. So, Anyway, you'll see me here going through looking at all the colors that I have to pull out of my dye cabinet and I'm just reviewing the color palette that I had pulled up, you know, a couple of months ago uh, when I initially did do the planning for this. And you'll see I have all of my supplies in my dye cabinet. So I'll pull out the colorways or the color um, pots that I need that I wanted to use to blend and make some of these colors. and here they are and I only like to pull out certain colors so when I know I'm doing a certain story or a color palette that I pull the colors I need and only the colors I need because otherwise it's very overwhelming so here I am ready to go laying my yarn in and so here I think a lot about which colors I want to dye first so which colors I can do and then use the water afterward um, to dye the next colorway, uh, things that exhaust really well versus don't exhaust well because I really like to save water. I try and fill things up right the first time so that I don't have to pull out or add too much water in. And the same thing with my rinse water. So here you'll see I'm dyeing up a yellow colorway first. Um, and I'm not going to pull you through all the colors that I dyed. But um, here's some of the finished product. So these are getting rinsed in the sink. So you'll see the Living Coral colorway, a lovely little gray colorway, and then here are the rest of the colorways from the color story. So um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes process. For me, this was really fun to film um, to kind of take you behind the scenes and everything. And you can see from the original color swatches that I really did lift a lot of the colors um, Either, instead of having solid jewel tones, I have more light speckled tones. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.